Hello everyone. I'm going to go over the RS latch and the D latch today. Hopefully we can get a better understanding of what's going on and um, realize what they're used for. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's draw the RS latch. It's really just a combination of two NOR gates. Looks kind of like this. And then we will have our inputs R and S. And then our output here go up over and into R. And then our output here go down over and into S, kind of like that. Our output here will be Q, and our output here will be Q naught. So this is a way to store data. Uh, it's not the most efficient way, but it certainly is a way to do it. Uh, let's make a truth table for this so we can realize how this works. So we will have R and S, and then Q plus, and then Q plus naught. Let's have all of our possible combinations for R and S. And Q plus is the next state. So if we plug in 0, 0, Q plus is going to be, well, what will be our output? And Q is our previous state. So we can say Q plus is what will our output be, and Q is what was our output. And we really only care about Q plus. So if we plug in 0, 0 into R and S, well, this 0 here doesn't quite make this a 1 on our output because we need to know what our other input is. And that input uh, depends on Q. So if Q is 0, then we will have two zeros and a 1 here, and this will make this output 0. And if Q is a 1, then 1 will go down here, make this a 0, this will be a 0, and then we will have a 1. So Q plus in this instance is just going to be whatever Q was and then as we saw earlier Q plus not was just going to be Q not. <laughs> now if R is 0 and S is 1 well R is let's start, let's start with S. So if S is 1 then this flip-flop, or sorry, this uh, NOR gate is going to output a 0 no matter what. So Q naught is, Q plus naught is 0. So this 0 will go over here, and then with R, and R is also 0, so our output Q will then be 1. And now let's do R is 1, S is 0. Let's start with the 1. So if R is 1, then the output of this NOR gate will be 0, no matter what. So will be, Q plus is what will our output be. And then if we have a 0 here, and that's nor with another 0, then our output is going to be 1. Now let's make them both 1. Well, if R is 1, <clears throat> then our output of this NOR gate has to be 0. So 0 will come down here, and it will be nor with a 1, and since we're NORing it with a 1, then the output, Q0, also has to be 0. But notice how this is Q+, plus, and we have 0, and Q+, plus not, which is 0, which is impossible, because Q cannot equal Q0. Either one of them has to be a 0 and one of them has to be a 1. So we say that this right here is an in 
valid state. Okay, we do not want to use that one. Let's move on to a D latch. D latch is a little bit better because there is no invalid state and your output Q just depends on uh, your input D. So let's draw this out. It's two AND gates like that and then two NOR gates like that and again this will be Q and Q not and then our output here will go down over and into here and then our output here will go up over and into there and then our outputs from the two AND gate will go into our NOR gates like that and then here will be our enabler and then here you will have a NOT gate and the before input of the NOT gate will go into this AND gate and we will have our input D so let's go ahead and make a truth table for this. We have two inputs, D and E. I'll write it like that, not in order. And then Q plus and Q plus not. Let's write down all of our input combinations. Okay, and remember that Q plus is what will our output be, and Q is what was our input. Hmm. Okay, so, well, if E is 0, then these AND gates are not able to activate, and they're always going to output a 0. And remember, from our RS latch, which is um, just this combination right here, that if we have two zeros as our input, then Q plus is just going to be Q, and Q plus not is just going to be Q not, like that. And same for E is 0 and D is 1 because our doesn't matter what D is because our AND gates can't activate and if E is 1 and D is 0 well these are able to activate so 0 going to here and then we'll have 1 and then we will have 1 as our output and that means Q has to be 0 no matter what. So Q plus will have 0. And then we'll have 0 come down here. Well, first let's start here again. We have 0 and 1 anded together, which we know is 0. And then we have 0 and 0 uh, nord together, which will give us 1. Now let's do E is 1 and D is 1. Well, if D is 1, then we'll have a 1 here and a 1 here and it together. So that will give us a 1, which means that Q not has to be 0 no matter what. And we'll start over here again. Well, if D is 1, then right here we will have a 0, sorry. And that'll be ended with a 1, which we know is 0. So now we have 0. Nord together with 0, which we know is 1. And notice here that for all possible input combinations, E and D, we have no invalid states. And this, remember, was a D latch, and this was a RS latch. And in class, we usually deal with flip-flops. The difference between a latch and a flip-flop is a latch does not depend on a clock and a clock is something that toggles on and off um, very rapidly in most cases. So we don't use an RS. We can't make a flip-flop out of um, RS with, with this. We could expand it a little bit more to make it a flip-flop, but 
we generally don't really do that. But you can turn the D latch into a D flip flop by making the input E a clock and it will toggle on and off very rapidly. So we can pretty much assume that E is just a constant one because, um, I don't know, given 0.1 nanoseconds, then the gate will uh, keep having the opportunity to activate. So your output really only depends on what D is. Okay, well thank you for watching, and for my next video I will be making um, a tutorial on JK latches, T latches, and um, T flip-flops and JK flip-flops. So, thank you for watching. Goodbye.